Hey friends, welcome back to yet some more Reddit stories about entitled people, insane people, and all that kind of stuff. Hope you're all doing awesome today, be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet for more Reddit content, and let's get into today's stories. I had a student hit a new low the other day. For context, I'm a professor of communication located somewhere in the United States. Pray this did not happen at a college near you. Usually I can take a lot of things in stride. When it comes to students, I would like to think that I can handle practically anything. Teaching at an institution where many students are first-generation college attendees will always bring unique challenges. I realize that many do not have much life experience to work with, nor have they traveled to different places. I must keep it in mind as I work with them daily. If I didn't do that, I would probably snap. One student recently pushed me to the limit of my stupidity tolerance. I knew I was in for a long semester when she openly admitted during the first week of class that she was only in college to earn her MRS, which for those who don't know is a term for someone who goes to college purely to find a spouse, the joke being MRS degree is Mrs. It was the first time I ever heard this spoken aloud. For the sake of this story I will now call her Miss Manhunter. She was looking for a husband to marry who would take care of her. Our school has exceptional law and medical schools, so I think she was haunting those halls hoping to find Mr. Right now. However, I knew Miss Manhunter would be a handful to whomever she was with when she dropped a little nugget of knowledge that floored me. Her words still haunt me and I'm considering chiseling her quote on my grave marker so that it never vanishes into the ether of history. I tasked Miss Manhunter's class with formulating a persuasive speech. I let students work in groups because I figured they should pitch their ideas to the people who would hear what they presented. I walked around the room, giving points to consider as they concocted their ideas. When I arrived at the group with Little Miss Manhunter, a student proposed that we should colonize the moon. This topic sounds like a great speech, but I must interject my sarcastic two cents. I mentioned that I believe we should blow the moon up, just like Alexander Abian proposed in the 1990s. The student I was talking to understood that I was joking. However, Miss Manhunter did not grasp that my reply was dripping with sarcasm. She promptly replied without hesitation that if we blew up the moon, there would no longer be night. The moment those words hit my ear, everything stopped. The little hamster in my brain decided it was time to go on vacation because I couldn't formulate a sentence responding to her blithering lunacy. Thankfully, the first student recognized that I was having problems and tried her best to explain to Miss Manhunter how night and day worked. Even with the explanation, she still insisted that the moon brings nighttime like the sun brings daylight. I do not drink, but this was one moment in my life where I seriously considered taking up the habit. Couple tried to force me to give up my seat on a flight, then the husband wouldn't let my daughter into the aisle. Over the summer, my 12-year-old daughter and I took a trip to Florida. For the flights, I paid extra to select seats so I could sit with my kids. I also paid for extra legroom. On the flight back, a woman claimed I was in her seat, which was next to her husband. I was sitting in the middle, my daughter was sitting at the window seat, and her husband was in the aisle seat. Anyway, I pulled up my boarding pass and showed her that this was my seat. She said her boarding pass also showed my seat, but wouldn't pull it out. I assumed the airline must have double booked the seat, so I called over a flight attendant. I explained that this woman says I'm in her seat, and that she says her boarding pass says my seat. I showed him my boarding pass. He asked to see hers. Her husband handed it to her. It showed a seat in the back of the plane. He said that she's supposed to sit in that seat, not mine, and if she wants my seat she can ask me, but if I say no she has to take her seat. She asked me. I said no, since I wanted to sit with my child, and I paid extra for the seat. Her and her husband started shouting at me. Her husband called me a f***ing entitled bitch. She said she'd sue me if I didn't give up the seat. I laughed and told her to get out of my face. She called me an entitled childless cat lady. I had my cat with me in a cat backpack under my seat. I said that while I am a cat lady, I have a child, and pointed to my daughter. The flight attendant sternly told her to go to her seat or he'd get security. She angrily walked to her seat while flipping me off. During the flight, my daughter had to use the restroom, so she asked me to ask the husband if he could get up so she could walk through. Even with the extra legroom, it was still too tight to walk through. He refused and called me a f***ing I had to call over a flight attendant who made him get up so she could get out of her seat. 
Some people are such entitled idiots. Non-paying guest calls the police. This is a secondhand story from someone who worked at a hotel front desk. They had a female guest check-in who claimed to be a computer consultant working for some big company in town, and this company would be paying her hotel bill. The front desk staff told her they still needed a credit card to cover the bill, since nobody in this company had ever contacted them to arrange anything, so she used her personal card. Also, this woman had an emotional support dog with her. After she stayed there about a week, either her card had stopped working or possibly had never worked after the initial check-in. They called her down to the front desk to try to arrange another method of payment, such as a different card. Well, it turns out she had no other cards that worked, and the company she was supposedly working for had never arranged payment either. The staff told her she'd have to either cover the bill somehow or leave. So this guest called the police. When the police got there, she told them that the front desk staff was harassing her. The police talked to the staff, then took the lady up to her room to pack up all her belongings. There was dog poop all over the floor, by the way. Then they escorted her out of the building. A few months later, some lady showed up at the hotel and was trying to arrange to check in for her friend. The staff said, what's your friend's name again? And then peeked outside and saw this woman and her dog waiting in her friend's car. The staff told her, sorry, your friend is not allowed to stay here anymore. And I assume that goes for any other place in the same family of hotels, which is quite a few in this area. You gotta wonder what she actually thought she was going to accomplish by calling the cops. As if telling them that you're being harassed is just gonna magically solve everything, after not paying for the room and being told to leave. I mean, she basically just called the police on herself to make sure she left the building. Entitled person loses his freaking mind and completely destroys my office after being told that he would need to set up an appointment to get free services. I work as a veteran service officer. We do every single bit of work for veterans for free in order to get the veteran clients their disability benefits from the VA. It's not a fun job at all. I have thousands upon thousands of interesting stories that I could tell. I've been physically attacked a few times by veterans. I've been spat on a few times. I've been threatened numerous times. But what happened today may take the cake. I'm at my desk working my ass off as I do every day. All of a sudden I hear someone loudly saying, Excuse me. I look up immediately and see a very angry guy standing in front of my desk. I wonder for a second how he got past security and my secretary. But my thought was quickly interrupted by this guy saying that he is there to sign up for his benefits because he, quote, served the country more than most. I don't even ask how he got past security and my secretary because I know that this conversation is not going to go well. I told him to go speak with my secretary and that she would set him up with an appointment as we do not work on a walk-in basis and I was very busy. He then said, I'm here now, help me. I explained to him that he needed an appointment and he cut me off as I was saying these words and verbally assaulted me, while rambling very loudly and angrily without pausing for at least a minute and a half. There was a lot of cursing, a lot of demeaning me and my organization, a few threats, etc. When he finally shut the hell up, I again told him that he could set up an appointment with my secretary, and he exploded. He destroyed everything on my desk, broke my computer monitor, punched a hole in the wall beside him, etc. I pushed the panic button as soon as he began to go off, and security was in my office in about 15 seconds, and his old ass tried to fight two large armed security guards. This predictably went poorly for him. One of the guards immediately put him into a submission hold where he was unable to do anything. While still in the hold, he was brought to his feet and taken to security, where they called US DHS Force Protection, which is the police force that secures federal government buildings. He was apparently charged with a number of charges, and trespassed so that he is no longer allowed in the building after he gets out of the DC jail. My mother took out a $50,000 loan in my name without my knowledge. My mother has always been very bad with money, but she is a very good liar. When I was in my teens, my dad got really sick and could not work. That left my mother in charge of the finances. But when my dad got sick, we went from being upper middle class to lower middle class very quickly. My dad's medical treatments were insanely expensive. Suddenly our electricity would be shut off randomly. I never knew if the water would be shut off or the internet and phones disconnected. 
we would get notices on the door of our home constantly. All this made me really nervous because I didn't understand what was happening. And every time I asked my mother what was going on, she would tell me that everything was fine and it must have been a mistake by the utilities company. I trusted her, so I thought that was normal. When I was 17, I decided I wanted to pursue going to college. When I asked my mom about college, she told me that she was excited and that she and my dad had a college fund saved up that would pay for it. She told me that she and my dad were going to take care of everything. What that meant was taking out a $50,000 loan in my name when I was 17. I had no idea my mom did that, and I have no idea how she did that without my knowledge. I'm assuming she forged my signature at some point. So I went to college without ever knowing it was costing me money. I was in my second semester of my freshman year when I realized something was wrong with my mother. I got a call from MasterCard saying I had missed my monthly payments for several months. Problem is, I didn't have a MasterCard. I didn't have any credit cards at all to my knowledge. When I called my mom crying to tell her that my identity had been stolen, she calmly said that she had some credit cards out in my name. Because she acted like that was a perfectly reasonable thing for a parent to do, I believed that it was. I trusted my mom. She told me she would take care of everything. But I would still get collections calls that I would have to beg my mother to take care of. So I struggled financially through all four years of college. At one point she stopped paying for my student housing, so on top of going to school and working I was constantly worried about being evicted. It was around the time I graduated that I realized my mother had taken out a huge student loan in my name. And by then I was stuck with a degree that was never going to get me a job that would allow me to pay off a loan that big. At one point in my 20s I had to move back in with my parents because my job was not covering my rent and student loan payments. During that six month period my mom was served with court papers three different times. I would go to the door and someone from the court would ask for my mother and then hand her papers, saying you've been served. Every time it happened she would not tell me what it was about and would just say, it must be a mistake. My dad did eventually get better and he was able to work again. My dad now has a really good paying job, but they have a lot of medical debt and whatever other debt my mom has gotten herself into. I am in my 30s and I now monitor my credit closely, mostly because I worry about my mother committing identity theft. I have clear boundaries with her, but she still lies and has never apologized for getting me into the financial position I'm in now. I do love her because I know she was struggling to keep our family afloat, but she should have been honest about how poor we actually were. She should not have let me go to college thinking it was a financially sound decision, and she should not have used me and my credit like a bank. Now I never know who to trust or what is real. Is reality what I know it is, or is reality what my mom says it is? Alright everyone, that's it for today's stories. Thank you for watching, I appreciate it. Be sure to drop a like and subscribe for more Reddit content. So take care, I'll see you next time.